Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. Holy One, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With God at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Let us worship God. Christ is raised and dies no more. In praise by death he broke its fearful hold, and our despair he turned to blazing joy. Alleluia. We share by water in his saving death. Born we share with him an Easter life, as living members of a living Christ. Alleluia. The Father spread their clothes, the Son with life. The Spirit's power shakes the Church of God. Baptized we live with God, the three in one. Alleluia. A new creation comes to life and grows. As Christ new body takes on flesh and blood, the universe restored and whole will seek. Alleluia. Cooped up inside our own homes, it may be easier these days to recognize how we have um, strayed from the mark. The ways in which our minds deceive us into following our fears. The ways in which we, as humans, tend toward a, a scarcity mindset when we are called to live out of a sense of abundance. As Presbyterians, we believe that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and that we will confess our sin together because we already know of God's grace and love toward us. So in that faith and confidence that God gives us, let us now confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. God of the empty tomb and our empty hearts, when we are afraid to speak our faith in the world, forgive us and help us to find our voice. When we are afraid to forgive and to love again, forgive us and give us the power to forgive. When we are afraid to stand up to misguided authority, join with the weak to make us all strong. When we are confined by our hurts, touch us with your wounded hands and set us free. When we are locked behind our doubts and fears, pass through our barricades, open our hearts, and give us peace. Friends, believe the good news of Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. Amen.
Of course, knowing that we are forgiven means that the peace that passes all understanding, the peace that Jesus offered his disciples in a locked room, the peace that he greeted them with over and over again is also a peace that is meant for us. And it is meant for us to extend that peace to one another. So I invite you now in your homes to text a friend, turn to a relative, call somebody on FaceTime when the worship service is done. Extend that peace to one another. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Blessed are you, O God of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we receive the legacy of a living hope, born again, not only from his death, but also from his resurrection. May we, who have received forgiveness of sins through the Holy Spirit, live to set others free, until, at length, we enter the inheritance that is imperishable and unfading, where Christ lives and reigns with you and the same Spirit. Amen. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors to the house where the disciples had met were locked because they were afraid of the Judean leaders. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he showed him his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Again he said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they will be forgiven them. But if you retain the, the sins of any, they will be retained. Now Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the disciples came to him and said, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said, Unless, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and, and put my finger in his hand and, and my hand in his side. I will not believe. About a week later, the disciples were gathered again in that room and Thomas was with them this time. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and, and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. Reach out your hand and, and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but, but believe. And Thomas said to him, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Well, blessed is anyone who has not seen and yet has come to believe. Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written here so that you might come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you will have life in his name.
I started at John Calvin Presbyterian Church a little over two years ago. At the time, I didn't know that my life would turn upside down in the subsequent months. And so even though they say, preach from your scars and not from your wounds, and that take care of yourself so that, so that you can take care of others, it was very difficult for me at the time not to let stuff sort of ooze out. And as careful as I tried to be, when you're going through something like a divorce, it's, it's almost impossible not to have people ask you how you are and, um, and offer their support for you. One such person was Margaret Reynolds. And I had asked her if she would be willing to write something for me today, in part because of the experience that I had with her in those first few months at John Calvin. The text for today, Jesus appearing before the disciples in that locked room that was filled with fear. Jesus appearing to Thomas and saying, put your hands here. Reach out your hand and touch my side. Do not doubt, but, but believe. Part of what Margaret did for me one day when we sat down in Starbucks together, remember when we used to do stuff like that, is that she, she told me the story or part of the story of her life, including how she survived in the aftermath of early widowhood when her children were still at home and her whole life was turned upside down. I'm indebted to her for that time that we spent together, for the wisdom that she shared with me and the way that she ministered to me and for the way that I am sure that her words will minister to all of us now. So listen to the words of our friend and member, Margaret Reynolds. Rejoice in the Lord always. Maybe it's because you did something stupid, or maybe it's because it was Tuesday, but for whatever reason, you are going to find yourself one day picking through the wreckage of your life after some kind of shocking event whether it's from a divorce or a death in the family or a tornado, you are very unhappy. You can look in every direction and see nothing worth saving. The fact that you are alive is small comfort for who wants to be alive when misery is pressing in from all sides. There is one thing you need to have in your first aid kit for such a time. It is the powerful medicine of gratitude. Bitter as it tastes, you need to swallow that pill and say what it requires. Thank you, God. Just be grateful for one thing, the bright cardinal that perches nearby surveying the broken bird feeder, the cool bit of breeze that lifts your hair from your sweaty forehead. Something. Just say thank you, God, for something. Even if you don't feel like it, say it anyway. Somewhere in the rubble of your possessions, you will find a pencil and a piece of paper. Write down the name of the thing you said thank you for. Cardinal. Breeze, put the paper in your pocket. You've just started a gratitude journal. Tonight you can write another thing on your gratitude list. Hot shower. The days ahead will be heartbreaking, back-wrenching, ache all over days. But by God's grace, you will discover that piece of paper on which you began your thank you notes. And you will think of another thing to be grateful for. Maybe it's a small thing. Maybe it will just be an exceptionally good cup of coffee. Small is okay, write it down. 
Maybe it will be a phone call from a good friend, Sam, who has not heard about your misfortune. You tell him about it and you feel just a little bit better. You write on your list, Sam. Thank God for Sam. Soon your paper, paper will not have room for all the things that you are thankful for, so you treat yourself to a small notebook and you find that you have developed a good habit. You write down one thing every day that you are grateful for. Your gratitude journal will help you through the days. Some days you might even write three or four words. Eventually you might write a paragraph and then you notice how much better you feel. You sit there among the bills you are trying to pay and you look at the remains of your lunch in the bottom of a cracked cup. You reach for your gratitude journal and you smile. Thank you, God, for ramen noodles. Delicious. We talked last week about Jesus showing up to the disciples after the resurrection and his wounds still being there. When the disciples don't recognize him, and it's not just Thomas that doubts, they are all doubting. They, they can't even comprehend that he would be before them. He shows them his hands and, and his side. Peace be with you, he says. And I think that's an essential part of what he does here for the disciples and what we are called, in a sense, to do for one another. We show people not our perfections, but the things that have formed us. And even the scars, the wounds that tell the story of who we are. And someday, when we most need it, Someone will sit across from us as we are in pain and tell us about their own scars. This is what Margaret did for me on that day. And she said, just give thanks, even if it's for the littlest thing. So this is the invitation for you this week and really in the time ahead, especially in the time of quarantine. I invite you to give thanks. Give thanks even for the littlest thing because gratitude is an antidote for anxiety. And God has given us much to be grateful for. Amen. Holy God, we pray for essential workers. For hospital workers. For teachers, for students and their families, for all staying in their homes. For those who are hungry. For those who are unemployed. For those who are sick. For those who are grieving.
for those who are anxious. For our church. We pray all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Greetings, friends and members. A couple of announcements for today. One is that we welcomed another baby into the church this week. Kara has had her second son, and we pray for them and their family and for all the babies that are being born during this anxiety-provoking time, that there would be health and wellness and joy. We give thanks knowing that the world is a better place, that this little one has been born. And we look forward to the day that we can celebrate together. Next, we do ask that you would keep an eye on your email for upcoming online events. I have been unable to do much besides worship since I have indeed had presumptive COVID-19. I am starting to feel better, but as you might have heard from other people's accounts, it tends to come in waves. And so there are days when I mostly um, just rest, and there are other days where I feel that I can get a little bit more done. And I hope to be well very soon. Lastly, we are still meeting as a session every month. And we, one of the things that we'll need to discuss in the months ahead is how we adjust our budget given the current times. If you have pledged to the church and need to adjust your pledge because of everything that's going on, we ask that you would let us know so that we can adjust the budget accordingly. That information will, of course, be kept confidential. If you need to just hold off on, in paying towards your pledge, that's totally understandable. Just let us know. No, we are grateful for all the gifts that people are able to give and look forward to continuing ministry as a church, even from our homes. So you may have noticed we changed the sign at the bottom of the driveway at the church to let folks know about the feeding program that we're participating in. And we are giving away to the families in need in the area pizzas on Saturday at the ACA Child Development Center and Sunday in our own JCPC parking lot to families that rely on the school lunches to feed their children. Just like the families that we feed at Belvedere right across the street. So to find out more about the program, you can look on the Facebook page for Real Food for Kids. It's Chefs Feeding Families. And the other way that you can help, which you'll see on there, is to purchase uh, pizza kits that you can make the pizzas at home and all of the proceeds from that will help fund this program. The 
and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own joy we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. I'd stay in the garden with him. And he bids me go through the voice of woe. His voice to me is calling. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Dear God, thank you for all of the gifts you bring us. Thank you for our families and this beautiful earth you have provided us. Please remind us to take care of each other during this time and keep us safe until we can all be together again. In your name we pray. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. May you be in this world filled with gratitude, acknowledging all the good things that God has given us, even in these difficult times. In that gratitude, may your fears slip away. May you experience the rest that comes with being enfolded by God's peace. And may you know the love of God every day of your lives. Amen.